this video we will talk about art schools of the 1920s and 30s, as well as artistic associations and art exhibitions held at that time. In fact, the first professional institution to provide higher education in art was the Ukrainian Academy of Arts, UAA, founded in 1917. Prior to that, on the territory of Ukraine there were only schools – the Kyiv Art School, which existed until 1920, the Odessa Art School, one of the oldest institutions which began its work in 1865, and the Kharkiv Art School, which was founded on the basis of Maria Rayevska Ivanova Private School. After graduating from these institutions, students received a basic level of education and acquired the rights to be an art teacher. Most of the works in the special fund were created by teachers and students of art colleges and universities in Ukraine. The system of higher education changed several times throughout 1917-1930s, which radically changed the development factor for those institutions. History of Ukrainian Academy of Arts is a great example of those political and social changes that were happening in Ukraine at the time. UAA had a big potential which influenced the formation of a self-sufficient and strong Ukrainian school of art later on. It was planned to establish an architectural, construction and sculpture department within the academy, and a system of lower art schools and gymnasiums were envisioned. A whole system of workshops was created under the guidance of certain artists. The first Ukrainian Academy of Arts professors were workshop chiefs Mikhailo Bochuk, workshop of monumental art, Mykola Burachik, Abram Manevich, painting workshop, Fedor Krachevsky, painting and portrait workshop, Vasil Kruchevsky, Architecture and Composition Workshop, Alexander Murashko and Mihailo Zhuk, Easel Painting Workshop, and Georgi Narbut, Graphics Workshop. Fedor Kruchevsky was chosen as the first rector. According to the Academy's statute, students were free to choose their workshop and teacher, which meant that many of them constantly changed their minds. An all-Ukrainian council dedicated to issues of people's education approved the new program of the educational system in March 1920. Technical colleges and institutes belong to higher education. The latter acted on the basis of seven-year and middle professional schools, while institutes operated on the basis of professional schools or worker schools. Hence the reorganization in UAA in 1922 into the Institute of Plastic Arts was happening within a statewide context. All students enrolled in UAA at the time had to fill questionnaires and write admission letters again, this time to the newly formed institute. It was then Alexander Bohomazov was invited to fulfill the chief position at the painting workshop. The Institute of Plastic Arts was merged with the Ukrainian Architectural Institute in 1924. The new establishment received a new title, Kyiv Art Institute. Ivan Brono became the new rector. The newly created educational establishment featured five departments – architectural, painting, pedagogical, holographic and sculpture. Considerable changes happened in the curriculum as well. Tradition of named workshops was cancelled, workshops in major disciplines and techniques were created, quantity of study hours for humanitarian disciplines were decreased. The institute's teachers and students were actively involved in artistic processes, joining various unions. The Association of Revolutionary Art of Ukraine, the Association of Contemporary Artists of Ukraine and the Association of Young Artists of Ukraine. The associations established branches in almost all major cities. Teachers received state orders for murals for various institutions, actively involving students. Life at the institute was becoming more and more active, which eventually could not help but attract attention. 
new pedagogical system with the introduction of formal technical disciplines presupposed giving a student an understanding of how objects interact in space as well as the feeling of generalized form. The aim was to prepare an artist to be able to do tasks with creation of forms which mostly concerned production and industrialization. Similar educational process was typical for German Bauhaus, where study of plastic arts was connected with acquiring construction skills, while education went hand-in-hand hand with the production process. Brightly displayed European vector in the approach to the study process and formal art searches corresponded to ideological requirements less and less with every passing year. In the early 1930s, the proletariat ideology and a wide propaganda campaign for approving one accepted unified proletariat art led Kyiv Art Institute to yet another reorganization. The institute was renamed into Kyiv Institute of Proletarian Culture. Polygraphic department was shut down. Instead, an artistic propaganda department was opened, as well as departments of artistic depiction of proletariat daily life, sculptural visualization of socialist cities, and of communist art upbringing. 1927 was the year of drawing conclusions of the newly created state, while Kyiv Art Institute celebrated a 10-year anniversary. Ivan Brona described the higher educational establishment's history as follows. The period from 1917 till 1920 was the most difficult for the academy. Its work and activities sometimes came to a standstill, while students, not being numerous to start with, would often leave. The existence of another high art school was no better. The school appeared due to the initiative of a circle of Ukrainian architects in 1918, later becoming the Institute of Architecture. The Academy of Arts was turned into the Institute of Plastic Arts in 1922, and finally both establishments were merged into one university for visual arts, Institute of Art. After another reorganization, the Kyiv Art Institute actually returned to the academic principles of education. The pedagogical system had to build a new socialist realism. However, denunciations and repressions had already penetrated the life of the institute. Among partially surviving pre-war personal files of students from Kyiv Art Institute, one can see the file of Petro Pavlovich Panchenko. One of his student era works, Woman with a Bucket, from 1929, was preserved among the works of the Special Fund. This work was presented at the third All-Ukrainian Art Exhibit, which took place in Kharkiv, Donbass, Zaporizhia, Dnipropetrovsk, Kyiv, Odessa and Mykolaiv throughout 1930 and 1931. By the way, the aforementioned work of Panchenko, Woman with a Bucket, fully corresponds to tasks laid down in the program for drawing and painting in formal technical disciplines. The nature of the task was to study the basic colors of the spectrum. The work unites basic program requirements, using blue, red and yellow colors, as well as building a figure while adhering to the proportion and visualizing volume and space form with the means of various hues. Model by Mikola Yanchuk from 1927 also belongs to similar student works. His teacher was Pavlo Holubetnikov. It is worth noting that the back of the painting is no less interesting than the front, as the numbers and abbreviations tell the whole story of the painting's journey. For example, we learn that the work was taken to Germany and after the Second World War it was returned to the museum and classified as Category Zero, which we have already mentioned. Another notable city forming the National Art School was Odessa. Poly College of Visual Arts PVA was created on the basis of Odessa Art College in 1924, which acquired the status of the Art Institute in 1930. In 1934, the institution was reorganized into the Odessa Art College. 
This educational establishment prepared artists, architects, painters, decorators, artists of fresco and easel painting, as well as sculpture artists. BVA organized reporting exhibits since the first year of its opening, which were always accompanied by catalog issues. As of 1927, there were many interesting departments here other than architecture workshop and monumental sculpture, theater decorations workshop, decorative painting workshop, polygraphic workshop, decorative monumental painting workshop. Before 1929, the system of workshops was replaced with departments bearing the same titles. It has to be said that both this year and during the previous one, colleges sent a number of expeditions for sketching Dnipralstan, Novgorod frescoes, monuments of architecture and ancient times in Ukraine. Clearly, the curriculum of Kai and PVA had common traits. For example, during the first year at the painting department, an obligatory task was to do still life in spectrum hues, so the composition would feature the hotter half of the spectrum and the colder half featuring additional colors, violet and warm green. A separate task was studying the head, meaning the influence of red and green colors separately on the skin tone of the face as well as studying the head in gray colors. Mihailo Bochuk was closely connected to PVA since he helped to develop the study program for the Monumental Decorative Department and would always involve students to participate in monumental murals. One of such students was Rigori Dovzhenko, who took part in creating the murals of Eastern Trade Chamber in Odessa, and in 1927-1928, in the paintings of the Peasant Sanatorium on the Hadji Bay estuary in Odessa, which was managed by Boychuk. In 1934, Odessa Polytechnic was again reorganized from a higher education institution into a school. The third major art educational establishment in Soviet Ukraine was Kharkiv Art Institute Kai, founded in 1927-1928 based on the Kharkiv Art Technical School, which was formed in 1921 on the basis of the Art College. Among the institute's tutors were such famous artists as Faber Krychevsky, Mikhailo Kozik, Lev Kramarenko, whose pedagogical activity was also connected with Kai. Two paintings by Kharkiv artist Ivan Lysenko were discovered within the special collection Holers from 1927 and Furnace Workers Heavy Industry. Unfortunately, there is little to no information on the artist's life itself. Thanks to the markings on the reverse of the holers, it became clear that he lived in Kharkiv and that the work was created for the third All-Ukrainian exhibition. In 1934, the Kharkiv Art Institute, like the Odessa PVA, was reorganized into an art college. From the mid-1920s to early 1930s, the exhibition activity encompassed all of Ukraine. Students, together with their tutors, became members of artistic associations, each organizing its own exhibition. The first all-Ukrainian art exhibition organized by People's Commissariat of Education in 1927 became the first unifying event for them all. It was dedicated to the anniversary of the revolution and was titled 10 years of October. Other than marking a significant date, the exhibition had to show all of the multifaceted nature of these artistic groups, which existed at the time including other achievements in the artistic sphere. The exhibition took place in all significant Ukrainian cities. Among the exhibits were not only paintings, drawings and sculpture, but also architecture, photographs, cinema, ceramics and textile. Kyiv hosted the exhibition at the building of Ukrainian Academy of Sciences, featuring almost 4,000 items. Artists from various associations were shown there. ARAU, AARU, 
AMAU Association of Modern Artists in Ukraine, Kastandi Fellowship of Artists Odessa, as well as artists outside of associations. The exhibition's panel of judges chose numerous paintings for purchase and inclusion to the National Gallery in Kharkiv. Ironically, many of those artists would be labeled as public enemies, counter-revolutionaries, terrorists, and their works hidden in the special funds later on. Among the artists and their works represented at the exhibition were six paintings by the member of ARAU, Ivan Lipkivsky, who was Mikhailo Bochuk's student. The titles were Occupants, Disabled Harmonica Player, Villager, and Four Etudes Depicting Plants. Unfortunately, very few of his works have remained nowadays. Ivan Lipkivsky's work Converter of the plant named after Dzerzhinsky, 1926, was chosen to purchase an inclusion to the National Gallery, currently Kharkiv Art Museum, during the same first all-Ukrainian exhibition, which became apparent from the inscription on the reverse. Ten years down the road, on October the 22nd, 1936, Ivan Lipkivsky was arrested. We find out from the order dated November the 2nd, 1936, that he is an active participant of nationalist fascist terroristic organization. Lipkivsky's wife was also arrested and sentenced to 10 years. Throughout her entire imprisonment, she was hoping that her husband was still alive and was constantly writing letters to Stalin with pleas to spare Ivan. Another work selected from the exhibition was Lunch in the Field Near the Tractor, 1927, by another ARAU member, Abram Cherkasky. Its unbelievable salvation is still surprising. There is an arrest mark opposite his surname in the special collection ledger. However, the mark is thoroughly crossed out. It is known that he was arrested before the end of 1937 with suspicions of him being a Polish spy. He was convicted and sentenced to 10 years at Karlak, Karaganda Correctional Labor Camp located in the Karaganda region of Kazakhstan. He was freed by Bere Amnesty in 1940 and returned to Kiev. He moved in 1941 back to Kazakhstan together with his family, and they stayed there for good. It is interesting to watch the sequence of all Ukrainian art exhibitions conducted by PCE of Ukrainian SSR. The second all-Ukrainian art exhibition held by PCE of Ukrainian SSR happened in 1929 and took place in Kiev, Odessa, Luhansk, Horlivka, Donetsk, Mariupol, Dnipropetrovsk, Kamyansk, and Kharkiv, as it was the biggest one. The third exhibition took place in 1930-1931 in Kharkiv, Donbass, Zaporizhia, Dnipropetrovsk, Kiev, Odessa, and Mykolaiv. 160 artists participated. However, the number of artists, works and cities where exhibitions were held was already decreasing. Years 1931-1932 saw the fourth exhibition with 102 artists participating. As you can see, it's even smaller than the previous one, and unfortunately, it doesn't have any catalogues. In 1932-1933, the fifth all-Ukrainian art exhibition was held by PCE of Ukrainian SSR, happened in Kharkiv only, capital of Ukraine at the time, and Odessa. It was a failure. Due to crushing criticism, the catalogues for the fourth and the fifth exhibitions were not issued. Only the preliminary photos for the catalogue were included in Stefan Taranushenko's archive, who was the curator of the fifth exhibition. Therefore, we have at least some idea of its content. The exhibition involved 160 artists and about 600 works. The reason for the last two exhibitions failing was the new course aimed at the unified path of development offered by the party's ideologists. The socialist realism, which was supposed to be the only artistic method. The ideological component started prevailing over the artistic one. 
all works created earlier, which initially were of artistic value and did introduce innovations and formalist searches, were to be destroyed. The sixth All-Ukrainian Art Exhibition in 1935 was completely tailored to suit the new art. The foreword to the catalogue features eloquent analysis and characterization of the processes that preceded the development and respectively formation of the new Soviet art. This exhibition highlights huge artistic inspiration, which is the result of a never-ending fight against Ukrainian nationalism and formalism on the artistic front. At the Kyiv Art Institute, the art teachers Tolkachev, Rakitsky and Ovchinnikov were greatly influenced by formalism. One could provide a large selection of works by Boychuk, Rokitsky, Schechtman, Petritsky, Sedliner and others as an example. Large, bright and multicolored pages of our life were depicted by them as colorless, disgusting and dead. The new course is vividly displayed through the titles of the new works Campaigning Among French Sailors in Odessa, Delivery of Provisions to the Battleship Potemkin, Muchnik, Comrade Stalin at the 17th Party Convention, Josefina Dindo, and others. Avant garde art, which was supposed by the young proletariat state, became an unsafe phenomenon. All artistic searches were crossed out and sentenced to destruction. The state finally imposed full control over art, lowering it to the status of a mere propaganda tool. Such was the beginning of forming the new art of socialist realism. Now works from special funds are displayed at several foreign projects, one of which is In the Eye of the Storm, Modernism in Ukraine, 1900-1930s. Works from the collections of foreign museums are added to the exhibition, which in turn affects the rethinking and need for changes in the narratives of foreign collections. The world is gradually discovering Ukrainian art and Ukraine. Through such art projects, we go through the path of decolonization for ourselves and form an awareness of our own place in world art. <laughs>